Hi, I'm Melissa, a software engineer on Firebase. And I'm Maple, a UX designer also on Firebase. We're here to talk to you about monitoring your latest release. Building and releasing new features is critical to app development, but launching a new release can be scary, especially if it's for a major feature in your app or a totally new version of your app altogether. Leading up to a launch, your team can have a variety of priorities. For a brand new feature, maybe you care most about ensuring that the user experience is intuitive and that users aren't crashing at critical points. For an improvement to an existing feature, maybe your team cares most about technical performance, like the response time of a new API endpoint, because of the impact performance metrics have on app revenue, retention, and churn. And while new releases are an exciting time to engage your users by bringing them more value, it comes with the real risk of introducing clashes or slowing your app down. We know you have a lot of things to worry about already. That's why we've been hard at work building features to help you focus on fixing problems rather than finding them. Let's imagine that you're working on a shopping app and your team is releasing a new checkout experience. As part of this new flow, you've adopted a third-party checkout solution and the engineering team has five top priorities. Ensuring that users aren't crashing, that alerts are set up to notify you if customers are crashing, checking if the new feature has introduced any new crashes, that app start time is still fast, and because your checkouts are being handled by a new API endpoint, you wanna make sure that response time remains low for the core checkout API call. This can seem like a tall order, but don't worry, we've got you. We'll walk through each of these in detail and guide you in monitoring your new release to ensure a successful launch with Firebase Cashlytics and performance monitoring. Let's start with checking how many users are crashing in your latest release. You want to make sure that it's pretty stable. Let me pull up the Crashlytics dashboard so we can check on crash-free users. So by default, the Crashlytics dashboard shows you information for all versions. But since you're focused on the new release, let's go ahead and filter the dashboard by that version. All you have to do is click the filter button at the top, select the latest version, then hit apply. You can see here that crash for users are above our target goal. And if you want to check how many users have adopted your new release, you can do that by clicking here and going to the latest release page. Okay, so we just finished checking on your app stability and things are going pretty well. But what if things aren't going well? What if there's actually a big issue that's affecting a lot of customers? It's important to have alerts set up so you get notified as soon as possible. One of the most important alerts in Crashlytics is velocity alerts. Velocity alerts are triggered when 1% of user sessions are experiencing the same crash within an hour. AKA, whenever there's a high impact issue happening in a short amount of time, you'll get a notification. You don't even have to set anything up. To save you time, we've automatically enabled velocity alerts in Crashlytics, meaning you can get them sent straight to your inbox without any setup. And if you wanna get alerted even sooner than 1% of sessions, you can always customize the threshold. Since the checkout flow is expected to drive a lot of traffic to your app, let's lower the threshold. Let me show you how to do this. In Crashlytics, click on the overflow menu on the issue table, then select velocity alert settings. You can see that the threshold is currently set to 1%. That's the Crashlytics default. To change the threshold, just drag the slider. Since we want to get notified about high impact issues right away, I'm going to lower the threshold to 0.1%, and then I'll click Update Thresholds to save my changes. This means that you'll get a velocity alert notification as soon as a crash is affecting 0.1% of sessions within an hour. Now you might be thinking, well, I'm not an inbox zero person, that alert is probably going to get lost, it'd be nicer if I could get this in Slack. Well, we've definitely heard that before, and that's why we made a Slack integration for Crashlytics. We also have integrations with Jira and PagerDuty, so you can get notified in the tools that your team is already using. Now, with the Slack integration, you can set it up to send a notification to any channel when an alert is triggered. For example, you can set up a velocity alert trigger to post to a Slack channel called Latest Release. Here's what the notification looks like. To learn more about the crash, just click on the issue name. That will take you to Crashlytics. You can also set up notifications for other alerts like regressed issues. For more info on setting up alerts and integrations in Crashlytics, check out the link in the description below. Now that I've covered some alerts, we can go ahead and mark this one as done. The next thing we'll be checking is how to find crashes in the checkout flow. With any new release, your app might be crashing in a few different places. This might be the checkout flow, or it might be the onboarding experience. 
Let's say that you're really interested in knowing if your app's crashing for any customers who have bought something, since a big reason why you ship the new checkout flow is to increase revenue. In Crashlytics, you can see all the crashes that are happening in your app, but it can be hard to see which crashes happen to just customers that bought something. Luckily, there's a way to do this with custom keys and BigQuery. Let's start with custom keys. Now, you might be wondering, what is a custom key? Well, a custom key helps you track the state of your app leading up to a crash. Another way to explain this is that a custom key provides a snapshot of information and records the last known value. Here's an example. If you're a game developer, you can use a custom key to track which level a user is on before they crashed. And if you're developing a shopping app, you can use a custom key to track if a user has bought something or how many items were in their cart before they crashed. We want to see crashes for customers that bought something, so let's go ahead and instrument a custom key for that. To set up custom keys for iOS, use the setCustomValueInstance method to set key value pairs. For Android, use setCustomKey. Here's an example of how you might set up your key value pairs. After you've set up custom keys, they will start showing up for crashes in the Crashlytics issue detail page under the Keys tab. This is great if you've already identified an issue and need more info on how to fix it. I did mention earlier that you can get some kind of dashboard that lets you see crashes by specific parts of your app. We just did the first step where I walked through how to use custom keys to tag parts of the app you're interested in. The second step is to set up BigQuery. BigQuery gives you access to your raw Crashlytics data through an integration, so you can get more in-depth crash reporting and run custom queries. You can even set up ways to automate your release process. For example, you can run queries to see if any crashes in your beta and production releases cross a certain threshold. You can also run a query to see crashes by custom keys, like the one we just added. So how do we do this? To start, let's enable the BigQuery integration in Firebase. All you have to do is go to the Integrations tab in Settings, select BigQuery, then follow the steps to add the integration for Crashlytics. And even if you already use BigQuery with Crashlytics, you'll be excited to know that we recently launched the ability to export data in real time. We know a lot of you have been asking for this functionality, and we're really excited to see how real time will power custom workflows and alerts for you. To enable real time, just check off Include Streaming in your BigQuery settings for Crashlytics. After you've set up the BigQuery integration, you can run queries on your raw crash data, which means you can find exactly which crashes are happening for custom keys that you've added. Now, this can sound a little intimidating, and you probably want to get back to building your app. So to save you some time, we've made a Crashlytics Data Studio template that does the heavy lifting for you. That way you can focus on fixing the crashes instead of finding them. The template is powered by your exported crash data from BigQuery. There are four different pages and each one focuses on a different use case. Your crash data can be sliced a little differently from the main Crashlytics dashboard, which is useful if you want to see things like crashes by device, crashes by keys, crashes by file, or real-time trends. The template provides a solid starting point for your team, and you can always customize it if you need to. To use the template, click the Use Template button on the top right to link your BigQuery export data. I've added the template and some useful links in the description below. Now, let's go back to our earlier goal of seeing crashes for customers that have bought something. We'll do this with the Crashes by Keys page. This page lets you see all the crashes happening for any custom keys you've added. Just use the filters at the top to select your custom key. You can also select a specific version or adjust the date range as needed. Once the dashboard's done loading, you can see all the crashes for customers that have made a purchase. This is great to help you prioritize what's most important to fix first. And if you want to learn more about the issue, clicking on the name takes you straight to that issue in Crashlytics. And if you're using BigQuery streaming, new crashes will also show up here in real time. All you have to do is refresh the page. To recap, you can check on specific crashes in the checkout flow or any feature you've added by instrumenting custom keys in Crashlytics and leveraging BigQuery and our Data Studio template. 
Use these tools to monitor what's most important for you and catch crashes earlier so that you can start working on fixes sooner. Now let's dig into app performance, starting with our next key metric for this release, app start time. App start time is a measure of time between when the user opens the app and when the app is responsive. When you integrate the performance monitoring SDK into your app, you don't need to write any code before your app begins to monitor app start time and other performance metrics automatically. Better yet, the newly revamped performance monitoring dashboard makes keeping track of app start time easier than ever. Let's take a look at this in action. The performance monitoring dashboard has been freshly upgraded, providing a glanceable and customizable overview of how your key metrics are trending. For mobile apps, app start time is included on the dashboard right out of the box. On the new dashboard, we can see how the latest version is performing compared to your app's baseline. We can immediately see that app start time is not where we want it to be and can start working on improvements right away. In the meantime, if your app also uses Firebase Remote Config, you could turn the new feature on or off without having to redeploy the app. This would allow your app development team to work on fixes without some of the added pressure of knowing that users are having a bad experience at app start. If you want to learn more about rolling out new features with Remote Config, feel free to check out the link below. When the team's done, you can come back to the dashboard to validate if the fix is working for real users. And if the dashboard starts trending green, the fix is working. Now that this metric is on the performance monitoring dashboard, a quick visit to the dashboard is all you'll need to be able to tell if app start time is or isn't performing as it should. Having app start time out of the box is great, but what if we want to measure something more specific to our app? For example, what if we want to gauge how easy the checkout flow is to navigate, such as by measuring how long the checkout process takes? To do this, we can leverage custom traces. Custom traces are a bit like timers. You can start and stop a trace at any two points in your code to measure things like the duration of a task, such as how long it takes a customer to complete their checkout, or to count things like hash hits or retries. To track the duration of the checkout flow, it's as simple as including two lines of code. The first line of code is to start the trace, which we'll put at the very beginning of the checkout flow. And the second line is to stop the trace. We'll stop the trace when the user hits the button to place their order. And that's all the setup it takes to get this metric reported in the Firebase console. Next, you'll recall that the new checkout flow is issuing requests to a new API endpoint. For these new requests, our team really wants to be sure that network response time stays low. Performance monitoring reports metrics for any endpoint to which your app makes a request. These reports are called network request traces, and they capture the time between when your app issues a request to when the response from that endpoint is complete. Some of the captured metrics include response time, payload size, and success rate. Performance metrics for similar network requests will get aggregated into what we call automatic URL patterns. These are helpful for being able to understand trends in your network request performance. But in our case, we have an exact high priority request to monitor, so we want to make sure that insights won't get buried in an automatic URL pattern. To do this, we can create a custom URL pattern to capture the specific endpoint. With custom URL patterns, performance monitoring will try to match network request URLs to any configured custom URL patterns before falling back to automatic URL pattern matching. So by creating a custom pattern that matches requests made to our new endpoint, Firebase will aggregate the request data under the new custom URL pattern. To learn more details about URL pattern aggregation, check out the docs, which are linked in the description. Custom patterns can be created from the network tab in the performance monitoring console. Here, you'll find a big blue Create Custom Pattern button, which opens a dialog for you to input your pattern. You'll notice that the dialog provides some examples to teach you about the syntax rules for custom patterns. These options are helpful depending on whether you want a custom pattern to exactly match a URL for a particular call, or if you want to aggregate metric data for a bunch of network calls under a single pattern. In our case, we want our pattern to capture one exact URL, so that's what I'll type into this text field. Once this pattern is created, it'll appear in the custom tab of this table and will look like this until it starts getting data. Once there's data, we'll be able to see if response time is where we want it to be. And it looks like currently it is. But say you want to go the extra mile and keep a close eye on this over the coming days. This metric can be added to the dashboard just like other metrics. I'll go ahead and add this metric. Now, it only takes a quick glance to keep tabs on how response time for this call is trending. With that, we mark another metric green on our launch checklist. Now our dashboard has exactly the key performance metrics that we care about for this launch, and if we ever want to change the dashboard, we can always add or replace any metrics later down the road. 
And because it's so important to spot issues and validate improvements quickly, we're delighted to share that we'll start reporting performance metrics in real time coming soon. And with that, we finished walking through our top tips on monitoring your latest release. To recap what we covered, we started by checking on the stability of the latest release with crash for users and Crashlytics. We talked about how to leverage important Crashlytics alerts, like velocity alerts, to get notified of issues sooner. And we were able to identify new crashes in the checkout flow with custom keys, BigQuery, and Data Studio. With performance monitoring, we customized the dashboard with key metrics to monitor app start time and to validate improvements made by the team. And we tracked the latency of a new API call in the checkout flow. We covered a lot of ways to monitor your latest release, but even just a couple of these techniques can go a long way towards making your app more stable, because after all, a successful app is a stable one. While you're working hard on your app, Firebase will be here to support you. Best of luck with your new releases. <laughs>